فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد ان شاء الله تعالى today we're going to start a series um, regarding um, dealing with the muslim leaders or the muslim rulers based on the quran and the authentic sunnah so this series is about dealing with the muslim ruler based on the quran and the sunnah we don't plan inshallah ta'ala to go over this topic as a political analysis where we talk about um, the do's and the don'ts and the things that they said and what not that's not what we're going to be and we we don't perfect that field we're not good at it what we do what we will speak about inshallah ta'ala is from manzur shari we're going to look at it fi dawi al kitab wa sunnah we're going to be looking at it through the kitab and the sunnah what it said to us inshallah ta'ala and the reason i chose to speak about this topic is because no doubt number one the time has called for it we're at a time if you look at social media everybody is saying what they want and everybody is speaking and little little speak about this issue through a, a quranic and a authentic hadith perspective the second thing is the doubts that have been pushed forward the doubts that have been pushed forward in this regard has become overwhelming and it has taken the mind of many and many have now thought that it's permissible and it's legislated and it's allowed to speak against the muslim leaders and as though those muslim leaders do not have the rights that a muslim has which is not to be backbited and not to be slandered these dis- these doubts that are brought forward revolve around four points if you look at the doubts that are going through social media and if you look at those doubts that people generally bring to you and the discussions that you would have in the masjid is four the first one is fataratan yuradu biha isqat bay'ati wali al-amr the first one is the intent of wanting to drop to drop the legitimacy of the leader's pledge of allegiance the pledge of allegiance that was given to the leader its legitimacy questioning it trying to make that drop and not be there or he's legitimate not even a leader why because he's not quraish so the prophet said quraish are the ones who have to be and, and and things like that so who said he's even a leader that's the first one that is pushed the third second sorry doubt that's all of the doubts are more than this but they revolve around these four one of these four the second one is yuradu biha sarf an-nasi an ta'ati the second one is the intent of wanting to divert the people from his obedience by all means necessary whatever can make the general mass not obey the leader it should be taken the third one is wa taratan yuradu biha takfiru and the third one is what is wanted is to label him as a disbeliever the third shubha that's pushed is labeling him as a disbeliever he's not even a muslim he's a kafir and the fourth one is wa taratan yuradu bihi tajweezu al-khuruj alayhi the fourth one is permitting it and allowing it for people to uprise against him for two people to go against the leader rebel against the leader those four are what the shubhat revolve around and the outcome that it brings about i just want to say as a disclaimer that those people who speak against the muslim leaders if they did it 
without attributing it to the religion and without making it as a religious ruling, it would have been less of a problem for them than them lying about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because many of these people are politicians. They are what? They are politicians. And what they want is to reach leadership. If they went about it without attributing it to the religion, it would have been less of a problem for them than to make, look, make it look like that they're, le- they're reaching this leadership through Nusrat al giving victory to the religion and bringing about khair and good for the people. وَلِذَلِكَ أَيُّبَ السَّخْتِيَانِيُّ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ said as Ibn al-Qayyim brings in his kitab إِرَاثَةُ الْهَفَانِ فِي مَصَايِدِ الشَّيْطَانِ that he said, يُخَادِعُونَ Allah. These people deceive Allah. كَأَنَّمَا يُخَادِعُونَ الصِّبْيَانِ The way that they fool and they trick the children. لَوْ أَتَوُ الْأَمْرَ If only they came to the matter, I mean they did their haram, عَلَى وَجْهِهِ In the way that they wanted to do it, without attributing it to the religion of Allah, كَانَ أَهْوَانَ It would have been less of a problem for them. The reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed the people of Saba was because what did they say? They used hila. They didn't come with the haram and just say, you know what, Saturday Allah said don't do it, we will do it. And they didn't just do it like that. They tried to justify it. Legislation wise, they tried to justify it. They tried to say what we're doing is permissible and it's allowed. And that is much worse than doing the haram itself. And this is what many fall into in regards to this matter. The way that I inshallah ta'ala hope to discuss these issues is first of all al-ijaz. I'm going to really summarize my speech. And mastata'atu ilayhi sabila. There was much more that I could be brought. There was much more other discussions that could have been open. But inshallah ta'ala summarization is my focus point. I'm going to summarize. I'm going to bring the doubt. And I'm going to bring the response for it, inshallah ta'ala, from the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the statements of the ulama. The second thing I'm going to do is al-i'tila' bi dalil al-shar'i. I'm going to give a lot of importance to the evidences, the Qur'an and the Sunnah. The third, inshallah ta'ala, is al-irja' li usuri ahli sunnah wal jama'ah. I'm going to bring the matter back to the fundamental principles ahli sunnah wal jama'ah unanimously agree upon. Fourth, is naqlu an ahli al-ilmi fi kulli ma uqarriru everything which i establish and i bring about i'm going to bring you the statement of the ulama who preceded me in that understanding who said it and quoted i quote it in arabic first and then i inshallah I translate it bi al karim i also want to say as a, a second disclaimer is this muhadara inma huwa raddun it is a refutation to the shubah, the doubts that are brought forward. فَلَيْسَ مِنْ هَدَفِهِ The aim of this muhadara, this lecture, is not al-kalamu and ashabiha to speak about the people who are propagating this ideology. Because what matters to us is the concepts. Those who hold this corrupted ideology may die. His name might be Muhammad, the one who's holding this corrupted belief, and tomorrow he dies and then Abdullah he takes over. So there's no point stipulating the matter to an individual. The individual can go. What really matters is that the principles are understood and the foundation is understood. And I also seek refuge in Allah. Wa ma'ad Allah. I really seek refuge in Allah. And akuna qad alqaytu hadhi muhadara that I have brought this lecture to your attention. And I'm giving this lecture for what reason? To defend the leaders. Because I have some bond with them or that I have some worldly gain from it. I seek refuge in Allah in that likes. The reason why I felt like this topic needs to be, de- be dealt with is for two reasons. Number one, protecting and defending the usul of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah from the false arguments, and the false principles that are introduced by those who are going against these fundamental principles of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So the first reason I'm doing it is not to defend the leaders, it is not to defend a particular country. Wallahi, it is usul ahl sunnah wal jama'ah, the principles of ahl sunnah wal jama'ah, that which they documented and they stated in their books of i'tiqad, that is being questioned and it's being put on, 
it is being put in a uh, question. The second reason is to defend and help and support the people whose brains are being undermined. Which is being poured inside it. من الفكر الضالي, the misguided views in all of its forms. The way, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to refute these doubts is in two ways. The first one is, I am going to, inshallah ta'ala, put down four principles. Four principles. These four principles, if you memorize them, and if you understand them, they will be four principles that any doubt that is brought until the day of judgment, these four principles alone can answer those doubts that will be brought. The ones that already been brought and the ones that will be brought, these four principles will help you be able to respond to them. The second way, inshallah ta'ala, I hope to go into is I'm going to bring about 20 doubts, 20 common doubts that are put forward regarding the leaders. Each doubt, we're going to bring it. We're going to mention those, who, those the argument that they bring forward and inshallah ta'ala, we will respond uh, to it. So the first one is a tafsil. I'm going to place the first way I'm going to respond to all of these doubts is by placing fundamental principles that are taken from the kitab and the sunnah and that which the pious predecessors all agreed upon. And then second way I'm going to respond to these doubts is I'm going to bring each doubt and I'm going to respond to it. And as you, as you know, doubts don't tend to finish. People will carry on bringing more. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lengthens our life and allows us to live more, we'll always open that session for more doubts to be responded to, inshaAllah ta'ala. Before I finish my introduction, I want to say to the brothers and sisters, generally speaking, and I want to also say to those who might oppose the points I'm going to bring and disagree with them, I want to say to them, be fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and come with piety. Hold on to the evidences, and that's what matters. And leave off having ta'asub, being fanatic towards opinions of individuals that you like, icons that you've placed up there. Push that aside. What really matters is following the evidences. Allah commanded you as a slave to follow the evidences. He said to you, Follow that which has come to you from your Lord. And do not follow مِنْدُونِهِ awliya. Don't follow besides Allah the speeches of individuals. Also, I request from every person who might oppose me to listen to this lecture. But to listen to it بِتَأَلِّمْ وَرَوِيَّةٍ Listen to it with an open heart. Put and get rid of your preconceived notion and what you already believe in. Listen attentively. Hear the points that I have to bring forward inshaAllah ta'ala. It may be possible, it could be possible, my beloved brothers and sisters, that you might come across answers to some of your doubts that you have. Or you, points that you didn't know of and evidences that you've never heard of. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He forgives those who have taken a wrong stance. For verily, the one who repents, Allah will accept his repentance from him. Allah says in the Quran, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا Say to, say to them, Muhammad, that my slaves who have transgressed and exceeded their limits, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله, don't give up on Allah's mercy. إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one who forgives all of the sins. إنه Allah is غفور الرحيم, one who is very forgiven to sins and one who is very merciful. The one who is lecturing and believes that a group of people, like myself, who believe a group of people have gone, have gone against the usul of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, I shouldn't also give up on the mercy of Allah, that Allah might guide them subhanahu wa ta'ala to the truth. And that, and that the one who repents from a sin is like he's never done it before. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely, and yanfa'a, that he benefits everybody who listens and who comes across my lecture, that he benefits from it. And I ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala that he places every good statement I say on my scale the day of judgment. Allah is the one who is able to do that. And that he forgives me for any shortcomings and any mistakes or faults that I might come with. 
الرد الأول أو التفصيل الأول The first تفصيل on all of the shubuhat the so four fundamental principles that we are going to bring forward these four principles I advise every single student of knowledge male or female to try to memorize them inshallah ta'ala these principles with its evidences inshallah ta'ala because these usul yantaliqu minha ahli sunnati wal jama'ah is the fundamental principles ahli sunnati wal jama'ah they pick up it's where they base their arguments on when it comes to dealing with the Muslim leaders. These usul are taken from the books of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and it's also taken from the Quran and the Sunnah. The first asal, the first asal inshaAllah ta'ala is Al Muslimu, that the believer, Ma'murun, he's commanded. So it's a principle you memorize it. Al Muslimu, that the Muslim, Ma'murun, is commanded. بِالتَّثَبُّتِ That he verifies مَا يَبْلُوهُ مِنَ الْأَخْبَارِ He verifies any news that reaches him. إِذْ لَيْسَتْ كُلُّ الدَّعَوَى Because every claim is not الَّتِي تُثَارُ Which is spread على حُكَامِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Regarding the Muslim leaders is not necessarily true. فَيَجِبُ التَّأَكُدُ مِنْ صِحَةِ الْخَبَرِ So it is obligatory to verify this information that if it's true. وَلِذَلِكَ many of the clay, well, many of the things that are pushed forward, the doubt, uh, the claims that are made against the Muslim leaders, if sometimes you go out of your way and you actually verify, you will find it is what مَا هِيَ إِلَّا دَعَوَى It's only mere claims. مُجَرَّدَحْ عَنِ الْبَرَاهِينَ And evidences are not brought forward. And as you all know, my beloved, my beloved brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, those of you who believe, in ja'akum fasiqun bi naba'in fatatabbatu. And that's another qira'ah. Those of you who believe, if it comes to you, the statement and the speech of a fasiq, fatabayyanu is one qira'ah, and another qira'ah is fatatabbatu. Verify, double check. فَتَبَيَّنُوا أَن تُصِيبُوا قَوْمًا بِجَهَالَةً فَتُصْبِحُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ So you do not afflict a group of people due to your ignorance of a situation. You unjustly wrong them based on a claim that was brought to you. And then you regret what you've done to these people because of the claim that you believed in. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said regarding this verse in his Majmu' al-Fatawa, the 19th volume, page 63, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, يُسْمَعُ خَبَرُ الْفَاسِقِ The statement of the fasiq is listened to. وَيُتَبَيَّنُ وَيُتَتَبَّتْ But it's verified. We listen to it and then we go and we verify it. فَلَا يَجْزِمُ بِالصِّدْقِهِ We do not. We do not say what you're saying is right. وَلَا كَذِبِهِ And we also don't say what you're saying is a lie. إِلَّا بِبَيِّنَهِ Unless we have a clear evidence for it. كما قال تعالى as Allah said إن جاءكم فاسق بنبأ فتبينوا he brought the ayah ibn Taymiyyah in ta kalamu his statement is finished he also said in another place in his majmu' al-fatawa the 15th volume page 308 he says وأيضا and also فإنه علل ذلك بخوف الندم Allah he stipulated a illa a reasoning in the verse of why we need to verify the statement of a fasiq. Allah gave us a reason why. The reason is because بِخَوْفِ nadam, Because you're going to finally regret the consequences of taking the statement of that fasiq. When nadamu إِنَّ مَا يَحْصُلُ Ibn Taymiyyah says that the regret it occurs عَلَىٰ عُقُوبَةِ الْبَرِيءِ When you actually punish an innocent person مِنَ الدَّنْبِ Because of a sin كَمَا فِي سُنَنِ أَبِي دَاوُودَ as Abu Dawood narrated in his Sunan, the scholars weaken his hadith. But they agreed on its meaning and they made it a qa'idah faqiyah. So we don't attribute it to the Prophet. And Ibn Taymiyyah didn't attribute it to the Prophet as well. He just said, Kama fi Sunan Abi Dawood, as it's in Sunan Abi Dawood. Idra'ul hududa bi shubuhat. Repel the capital punishments with doubts. Repel it with doubts. Fa inna al imama an yukhti'a fil afi. Because a leader. To do a mistake in forgiving, khayrun is better. Min an yukhti'a, 
than to do a mistake in punishing. If a matter revolves around and you have to pick one between one from the other, if you if you if a matter revolves around and it goes around about two issues, you either have to do a mistake in punishing an innocent person, or you do a mistake and you forgive a sinner, a wrongdoer, a criminal. Ibn Taymiyyah says, كَانَ هَذَا الْخَطَأُ خَيْرُ الْخَطَأَيْنِ The best or better of the two is the latter one, which is to do a mistake in forgiving a person is better than doing a mistake and punishing a person. And this is a qa'idah which the ulama mentioned. So that's why the statement of the fasiq, the wrongdoer, the criminal, you don't say is right. As Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, فَلَا يُجْزِمُ بِالصُّدْقِ You can't say what you said is right. وَلَا بِكَذِبِ And you can't say you're lying. إِلَّا بِبَيِّنَةٍ Unless there is a what? A evidence. Let's apply this on the waqa that we're living on today. Let's apply it on the reality. Somebody goes on YouTube and they see a leader, a Muslim leader drinking alcohol. Who, where did you get this from? Is this clear evidence for you to accuse a person over what you've seen on YouTube? Or for instance, to use a uh, news outlet which you know opposes a particular country that has an agenda against this country. You then take the news from this and you take it on. When the people of that news and the news itself are fasiqeen, you take their statement and you tweet it or you even WhatsApp it to a group of people and you say this country are fasiqeen because news so and so said about them this, 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 this. This goes against what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah is saying. Where's your reference? Oh, that news outlet. Okay. Those news, that news outlet are fasiqeen. Okay, they are fussaq. You're now taking their statement regarding a Muslim. We don't believe in it, no, do we? Disbelieve it. We need verification, we need evidence. This application is very important. Al Allama Abdul Rahman Nasir al Saudi, in his tafsir on this ayah, he said, وَهَذَا أَيْضًا مِنْ آدَابِ الَّتِي عَلَى أُولِ الْأَلْبَابِ التَّأَدُّبُ بِهَا وَاسْتِعْمَالِهَا He said, This. <coughs> It's from the etiquettes that are required from the ulul albab, the smart people. It's the smart people that come with these characteristics, brothers and sisters. It's the smart people who would be found in them these characteristics. At-tabayyun wa tatabut Verification. at biha. They're the ones who manner them themselves and adorn themselves with these beautiful etiquettes. And they use these etiquettes. Wa huwa, and it is, an nawi ida akhbarahum fasiqun. That if a fasiq comes to the ulul albab, the wise ones, Okay, فَاسِقٌ بِخَبَرٍ If it comes to them with a news, أَنْ يَتَتَبَّتُوا They verify. فِي خَبَرِهِ The information that he's bringing them. فَلَا يَأْخُذُوهُ They don't take it. مُجَرَّدًا Just because he told them. فَإِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ خَطَرًا كَبِيرًا Because in that there's a great danger. Allahu Akbar. وَوُقُوعًا فِي الْإِثْمِ And you're going to fall into a very severe sin regarding this. فَفِيهِ دَلِيلٌ Pay attention. Now, Abdul Rahman Nasir Sa'di says there's an evidence in this ayah. Three things there's evidence in this ayah. Khabaru Sadiq Makbul. The truthful one, his statement is accepted. And the information he brings us, the reliable person, his information that he brings us is accepted. That's one we take from the ayah. That's the mafhum al mukhalafa, the reverse understanding. The second thing that we take from the ayah is, wa khabaru al kadib. The liar, his khabar is what? Is rejected. The liar who lies, he's what? He's khabar, the information he brings to us. We what? We reject it. The third thing that we take from the ayah is وَخَبَرُ الْفَاسِقْ مُتَوَقَّفٌ فِيهِ And the fasiq, the criminal, the sinner, he's what? And whatever news he brings to us, we do tawaqqaf, we withhold from it. We don't believe it, nor do we disbelieve in it. انتهى كلامه the statement of Abdul Rahman Nasir Saudi is over. Fa'idah muhimmah, a very important benefit that we need to take now, which is that the ayah, Ya ayah ladina amanu in ja'akum fasiqun binaba'in fatabayyanu. The ayah, what did it speak about? The ayah spoke about fi khabar al fasiq. The information that comes to us from a what? A wrongdoer. 
What also takes the same ruling as a fasiq is khabarul majhul. The news of the ambiguous individual. A person who we don't know their status. We don't know if they're a liar. We don't know if they're a truthful. We don't know nothing about this person. They're unknown to us. They're ambiguous. Are, we all to, are, we, are you with me? And the evidence to show that this khabarul majhul, the unknown one, falls under the khabarul fasiq. And the khabarul fasiq, what was the ruling regarding it? Mutawaqqafu fi, we withhold from it, right? The majhul. So some random WhatsApp person sends you information. You don't know who this person is. You give them the same ruling as the fasiq, which is what? Mutawaqqafu fi, you withhold from it. The evidence to show that this also, the khabar al majhul takes the same ruling as the khabar al fasiq is two, two angles. Number one is the majhul, the person who is what? Who is unknown, who is ambiguous. You don't know who they are. It is possible he might be a fasiq. So the safe side would be for you to take is to withhold from the information he brings to you. And that you go towards verification, you verify Just the same way we withhold from the khabar of the fasiq and we verify. The second evidence, the second point that shows you that the khabar al majhul takes the same ruling as the khabar al fasiq is that Allah gave a reason why we need to verify the information that comes to us from the fasiq, which was what? Allah nusiba bil jahala. That we do not afflict a people due to ignorance. And to see buqawman bi jahala that we don't afflict a people regarding a news that came to us, but we're ignorant of it. And isabati bil jahala is also present in the khabar al majhul because the person who's bringing it to you is a person you don't, you don't know. You're ignorant of them. So due to that reason, it becomes clear bi jalain. Clearly, it is. That if a majhul, khabar al majhul comes to you, it falls under a tatabut, wa tabayyun. I need to verify, brother, and you need to know who it is. So if a person comes up to you and says to you, so and so, he's being warned against. <coughs> who warned against him? Allah, one shit. What's his name? Oh, he told me not to tell anyone. Gee. Okay. What's his description? Oh, I can't also give you his description. He then. Is a khabarul majhul. If a scholar comes, if somebody comes up to a scholar and says, Sheikh so and so drank alcohol, and the Sheikh doesn't know who the person is, he needs to say to him, What you brought me, I have to do what? Tabayyul, tathabbut. So anybody who you don't know, it's not that they're a fasiq. No, you're not saying it's a fasiq. You're just saying you take the same dealing of a person who's fasiq. Because I don't know your integrity, and I don't know what you are, so I need to verify. Jameen. That was the first asal. Sahih? That was the first foundation. Are we all on the same page regarding the first foundation? We're now going to move swiftly on to the second foundation that we need to agree on. Which is, Ajma'a ahlu sunnah. Ahlu sunnati wal jama'a unanimously agree upon. Ala annahu la yajuzu. That it is not permissible. Al khuruj. It is not permissible to go against and uprise. Ala wali al amri, a Muslim leader. Illa fi halati muwaqa'atu lil kufri al bawah. Only when he falls into clay cut kufr. Ahl sunnati wal jama'a unanimously agree that it is not permissible to go against a Muslim leader until he comes with disbelief. And today, if you look at many things that are being said about the Muslim leader, for example, he brought a rapper or an artist over to his country. It's a sin. He opened now and he allowed cinemas to be open in the country. It's a sin. Are we all together? It's a what? All of these are ma'asi. They are sins. We're not undermining that the fact that these are scary sins, very worrying sins. لا يشك في مسلم أي مسلم does not argue that. For example, he has opened banks that permit riba, or he has opened a brothel, or he opened a, for instance, a alcohol shop. All of these are 
معاصي they are sins لا تصل بفاعل هذا الدعاء that leader that is doing it it has not reached him إلى حد الوقوع في الكفر it has not brought him and it does not make him a kafir so you see a lot of Muslims say to you oh I went to Saudi Arabia and guess what they now they've got what do you call it uh, banks that have riba subhanallah look at these people they are so much we need to go against them and this is exactly what you're doing is you're going against ijma'u ahli sunnati wal jama'ah that the leader the only time that you're allowed to go against him is when he comes with kufr and all of that which you just mentioned to me are major sins they have not reached the level of kufr and the way that ahl sunnah wal jama'ah believe that should be dealt with the sinner the, the leader the muslim leader who is a sinner who is doing sins whether it be minor sins or it be major sins according to ahl sunnah believe which they took from the quran and they took from the sunnah is to advise him and they to make dua for allah and make dua for him that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he guides him and brings his, brings him back to his senses and they also believe that listening and obedience still remains even if he is even if he's committing major sins this is ijma they unanimously agree upon that everything which he commands that he tells his ra'iya his people to follow and to do they have to listen to him they have to obey him except the sins if he tells them that you have to sell alcohol they don't listen to him if he says, says to them you have to uh, trade riba in the country they don't listen to him they don't listen to him and they don't take that from him Al Imam Al Nawawi transmitted that ijma he's not the only person many can transmit the ijma but Al Imam Al Nawawi he transmitted an ijma he said I'm going to be two imams who brought the ijma regarding that you're not allowed to go against a Muslim leader who has come with less than kufr. You're not allowed to go against him. Ijma' consents. And is ijma' something we have to follow, my beloved brothers and sisters? Is it from the evidences that we that is abiding for us to adhere to? We need to follow ijma'. 